What is good, folks? This is Acid Roots. I'm going to review Cypress Hill's kind of off-to-the-wayside album from 2001, Stone Raiders. Now, this came out about a year and a half after their new metal and rap metal album, uh, Skull and Bones, which was kind of a double album. It was a small double album, but it was st still a double album. But this kind of takes it, it, this is a very mellow album, but it kind of reminds me of like their 90s records, just without the fact of sounding quite as stark and as Boom Bat production. Their head honcho producer, DJ Muggs, is, he produces this whole album, and he gives them a lot of pretty solid beats. Maybe not the whole way through, but enough of the way to kind of get some solitary stuff. And I do like when DJ Muggs teams up with Cypress Hill. It's just an overall great feeling between songs that he did in the past, like... Uh, like uh, Hand on the Pump and How I Could Just Kill a Man and some of those records, Latin Lingo and some of those. I mean, he produced a lot of the, I don't know if he produced Skull and Bones. I don't know if he produced like Cypress Hill 4, but he at least did like a lot of like the first two albums and possibly Temples of Boom. But I do appreciate the fact, and another thing is just the fact that sometimes producers don't typically stick around. Like Dr. Dre didn't always produce for Snoop Dogg later, but it's good that DJ Muggs is back with Be Real and Send Dog. That definitely kicks ass. But yeah, so th this is a very mellow album. It just kind of reminds me of something that feels kind of odd that it even came out in the first place because really Cypress Hill could have taken off between Skull and Bones and their 2004 album uh till death do us part and it probably i mean i i'm they did eventually start spacing out their records more but this is kind of just one that just seems odd all together that it even came out because the singles off of it there's just two bare bones singles they didn't chart and it's not even like the typical valve that is talked about with them it's just kind of an odd album overall it's kind of like eminem's marshall mathers lp2 that one's kind of an odd one and uh like 50 cents uh curtis album or terminate on site it's just kind of an odd kind of off the wayside kind of one that's a little bit removed from their highlight days i mean i definitely think low rider was a particular particular smash hit but trouble just kind of strikes me as like an kind of bewildering kind of song there but we'll, we'll go ahead and talk about the singles now to get into that so the first single is trouble and this kind of has like some distorted guitars in there it's just kind of like a real kind of psychedelic hazy sounding kind of song i do think it's one that could be smoked too it definitely reminds me of a song that you could hear spring summer just kind of walking up the street that type stuff and cruising around uh, i mean really it's not quite as errand running as like hand on the pump and how i could just kill a man but it definitely has like that vibe of just you know, with the like a convertible car in the summertime type stuff wind blowing in your hair type feeling just kind of feels like a breezy song which i uh, which i like about it but it's just so damn mellow that is the thing i mean everything about the song is mellow minus like the chorus the chorus when they start yelling and like the rap metal type sound it's kind of an amalgamation of rap metal but it's only in the chorus so is this kind of an interesting one there they do retain some of their rap metal moments but it's not nearly as prevalent as it was on skull and bones but it's just a nice touch to kind of have that where it's kind of like a mellow kind of rap song but then it turns into like a new metal one so i did appreciate that and then the second single is an even more mellow song which is like low rider which i'm glad that you know if you know war's low rider i mean obviously there needed to be another low rider with how popular low riders are in california and the west coast and that type stuff so it's just interesting kind of get it, it's just a perfect kind of bubbler and bong type song that just kind of feels like a, a, it really feels to me like a spring song it really feels to me like a spring slash early summer song, something you hear in March, April when the grass is bright green and it's all dewy out and that type of stuff. And you're seeing the, the leaves come back on the trees. It just kind of reminds me of that sort of atmosphere about it. I did particularly like it. I mean, really, it's a long song. It's six minutes and 41 seconds, but they do not have it go on that long. It really ends at about four minutes and 30 seconds, which is a lot more manageable. But I, I don't know. They just put that on there. But it is a pretty solid song. Definitely one of the more recent or definitely an, a highlight for 2000 Cypress Hill because they didn't do a lot in the 2000s. They only did three albums and all of them came out in the first half of the 2000s. So it's just kind of, it's a real kind of 
cruising around, low rider song. This typical, I mean, this is what I talked about when I said the West Coast vibes kind of have like this real kind of lambent and mellow kind of feel towards it because it's just not like in your face, like hand on the pump or insane in the brain kind of are. This has like a real kind of smoking, kind of high as hell, kind of laid back kind of mentality and stuff. But I appreciate it. I definitely do. It's a great, I like low rider cars, Cadillacs, that type of stuff. They just kick a lot of ass. This is good to kind of see that sort of stuff on the song. And it's just, it's an interesting topic because Cypress Hill doesn't no, always kind of have those type of songs. So it's just good for that. And um, yeah, to talk about the rest of this project, I'll talk about some of the ones I enjoyed for you. So like, um, I'll go ahead and list the seven songs I recommend. So out of 13 songs, the Spotify version doesn't have Weed Man's. So I don't know about that one. But the seven and the intro was a skit. So the, or not a skit, but it was just kind of, it wasn't a song. So the seven songs out of 13 I recommend to you would be Trouble, Low Rider, Here is Something You Can't Understand, Life, Catastrophe, Memories, and Psychedelic Vision. So most of the best songs on this album come in the last half of the project. I definitely feel like like the initial, minus the song Trouble, which is the first song you hear, a lot of this other bunk on here is just not really easy on the ears. I felt like it just kind of has like a sleeping giant kind of feel towards it, or it just is not immediate. Like I didn't really like, it Ain't Easy, Bitter, Southland Killers, and some of the guests really don't help this project. Like, I almost like the beat on Red Meth and B, but I don't know, it, it just felt a lot more kind of oddly energetic, and having Method Man and Red Man on the song, it just was not quite the right arrangement for what I would have wanted. I mean, it has a serviceable beat, but not nearly as catchy as Cypress Hill normally is. It just kind of felt awkward for that. I, I didn't like the approach on It Ain't Easy, and I didn't like Southland Killers. That was, I mean, maybe, yeah, those were just not good arrangements. There's just like a lot of pretty plodding beats on here that just really sounded ugly to listen to. Chronologic was another one that was just kind of odd and not a substantive. I mean, I really liked the energy. It, it had been three and a half years since they had done it, but I really liked the kind of ambient energy of Cypress Hill 4 with songs like Tequila Sunrise and Dr. Green Thumb and that kind of offhanded mellow energy, but they don't really get to that sort of style until like the second half of the project. Like I definitely like the rap rock tinge of Catastrophe. Life pretty much had the best beat on here. Life with the, with the hook artist Cocaine. Life was like a version of Tequila Sunrise, which really kicked a lot of ass. I definitely like that one. Life was just fun overall and pr pretty much had the best beat on the whole album. Just If you like Tequila Sunrise, it had that same kind of hazy guitar, kind of uh, melancholy kind of guitar on there that I just really appreciated. Like, here is something you can't understand is kind of Cypress Hill on their crazy shit. I definitely kind of feel like it kind of was a sequel to here or how I could just kill a man, but it's just a lot more manic and kind of horrorcore sounding is to kind of see Cypress Hill on that horrorcore type tip. It really felt like they were about to cap somebody or something like that. I also liked Memories. That one was kind of like, Memories was kind of like a kind of hollow and kind of brooding kind of introspective song that I like. I, I like when Be Real and Send Dog get introspective because they're stoners. So their introspection is not just, oh, I need to hit the books and start being in a suit and tie more and, you know, like become like a scholar or something, but theirs is just kind of reflecting on like the stuff that they, the, the lives that they lived back in the 90s and stuff. And Psychedelic Vision is kind of like a haunting kind of Juggalo-like song. I definitely, I, I don't recall if like Be Real and Cypress Hill really went to like the gathering of the Juggalos and that type of stuff. I think they might have actually had arguments with them. I don't remember. But I, I this really did feel like a Juggalo and kind of haunting, kind of haunted woods kind of song. This felt like something smoking pot in the woods, something like that kind of thing. And... Yeah, this most of like the second half of the album between songs eight and 14, the only real song I didn't enjoy out of that mixture was just Red Meth and B, which if the beat had just been a, a little less like in your face and a little bit more mellow and had some more haze and dissonance to it, I probably would have preferred that one, but that was just kind of the situation. So any song between minus Red Meth and B between eight and 14 are pretty 
state of the art, but the rest of them just kind of had bad beats, not real inter interesting approaches, and just kind of like not, this a lack of kind of cohesion, you know. A lack of cohesion so that's kind of the situation but me liking 7 out of 13 I'm gonna give this album a 6.75 out of 10 just because the energy behind this album is just so mellow and off to the side I mean I, I was really kind of surprised I guess because they had kind of maybe burnt themselves out after skull and bones and they had dropped a lot of albums in the late 90s and such but just to kind of wonder about it as to why it just feels like so not necessarily lukewarm, but just lukewarm, luke, it doesn't feel lukewarm, but just kind of lukewarm in effort and energy, it's just kind of like, kind of haphazard, eh, kind of energy, you know, but it's good, I mean, definitely when they don't try, I, I don't know if they were trying, or if they were just stoned, or, I mean, it says stone raiders, but I don't know if they were just kind of more lackadaisical this time it, it works for the most part but it really takes a while if you buy the cd to get started with it and it's just kind of there's just blunder after blunder for a good while and it's, it's not until the eighth song that the songs really start getting good and that's just kind of the concept about it but if you're just picking and choosing it's a lot easier but i still would recommend to buy this album because it is it's like a typical early 2000s record especially rap you know and that sort of stage where dj mugs does have some solid beats and produces pretty well but it's just not it you know him getting adjusted to the 2000s and not having like that 90s feel towards it is interesting it's just interesting seeing what mugs kind of had to do with it but uh, it, it's not a full it's not a full way through that's this kind of thing he's definitely one of the better west coast producers but it's not just like a tour de force like i would have probably preferred it to have been but 6.75 out of 10 the social score i'm gonna give like a 4.75 out of 10 just because two meager singles i mean low rider is really excellent that's probably the one i think people would like preferably i mean both the singles are good but it's just kind of got a lackadaisical oh shit i didn't even know that this album was out kind of feeling towards it and that's just kind of the atmosphere I mean, I just kind of look after it, and I mean, this album is so off to the wayside. It's It's got some social moments on here, but it's just kind of odd that it just doesn't have them in abundance. And that's just kind of the situation. Like, I feel like some people might like Catastrophe. Other people might like Here is Something You Can't Understand. Other people might like Red Meth and B. Other people might like Memories, and other people might like Psychedelic Vision. It's just not quite as amalgamated just in terms of like you know these are like the hit songs and every single person chances are is going to like this one and this one and that one this doesn't quite have that kinetic energy as far as that go around kind of actually has but i just feel like a 4.75 the singles at least have that kinetic energy for socializing but in terms of like other highlights even for stepping out you know having a powwow smoking powwow that type stuff and uh like stepping out to the club and going to some of those moments and it doesn't really have any songs for the ladies either so that's another thing that's kind of a disappointment and cypress hill could use it for a, a few more of those as far as some flirty numbers but it's not it doesn't really have that but i do kind of feel like if there were some other hits that i would recommend in terms of stepping out i'd probably say probably yeah, I don't even know, maybe psychedelic vision and possibly memories, but it's just not in terms of a very outgoing kind of eccentric, and it's not, it's very, like, I normally like Cypress Hill for air and running type songs, but it just doesn't really have that kind of feel. I mean, it's just kind of in a more hardcore sense, but some of these are just kind of more contemplative car type songs, a little bit of smoking in there, but just not quite a stepping out and being social in a lot of ways so that's just kind of an interesting thing about it but there are some good moments it's just kind of more i, I don't want to say wholesomely insular but it's not quite as like fairly like stepping out in a lot of ways so just understand that it's just kind of more the whole album is just mellow basically so yeah but in terms of the future cypress hill dropped an album in 2022 so eventually i'll get to that but i just wanted to get some more cypress hill reviewed and such like that so yeah